Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lepakshi Khurana. Here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Monday, the 16th of December. Protest against India's citizenship law spread across university campuses. Taliban steps up attacks in Afghanistan after peace talks halted. And at least 10 killed in Bangladesh factory fire. Now for all the details, protest in India over the new religion-based Citizenship Amendment Act spread to student campuses across the country on Monday. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has said the new law is meant to help minority groups facing persecution in the neighboring Muslim-majority countries and has denied any religious bias. Protests over the Citizenship Amendment Act based on religion spread to student campuses across India on Monday. Students of Nadwa College, an Islamic seminary in Lucknow city, headed towards the college gate in large numbers on Monday. Police had to close the college gate in a preemptive action after which the students even pelted stones at them. Under the law passed by Parliament last week, Non-Muslims from neighbouring Bangladesh, Pakistan and Afghanistan, who have settled in India prior to 2015, will have a path to Indian citizenship on grounds they faced persecution in those countries. Anger fueled among student groups after clashes between police and students of Jamia Millia Islamia University in New Delhi and Aligarh Muslim University in Uttar Pradesh province during protests on Sunday evening left several injured. Meanwhile, Chief Minister of West Bengal Mamta Banerjee held a massive rally in the province against the Citizenship Amendment Act. In India's northeast and other provinces bordering Bangladesh, people are upset over the impact that a large influx of migrants is having on society and the pressure it places on their land. Prime Minister Narendra Modi's ruling Bharatiya Janata Party has said the new law is meant to help minority groups facing persecution in the neighbouring Muslim-majority countries and has denied any religious bias. In news from Pakistan, the Lahore High Court on Monday issued a notice to the government on former President Parvez Musharraf's plea urging it to stay the treason trial against him in a special court in Islamabad. The special court is expected to announce its verdict in the long-drawn high treason case against Musharraf on Tuesday. A Pakistani court on Monday issued a notice to the government on former President Parvez Musharraf's plea urging it to stay the high treason case proceedings pending before a special court in Islamabad. The former military ruler Musharraf in his application filed on Saturday has asked the Lahore High Court to declare the proceedings pending before the special court and all actions against him as unconstitutional. The three-member special court is expected to announce its verdict in the long-drawn high treason case on Tuesday, despite an earlier Islamabad High Court order stopping it from issuing the verdict it had reserved in the case last month. Musharraf, who has been living in Dubai since March 2016, is facing treason charges for suspending the constitution and imposing emergency rule in 2007, a punishable offence for which he was indicted in 2014. The 76-year-old former Pakistan army chief left for Dubai for medical treatment and has not returned since, citing health reasons. 
Moving on, load shedding and high electricity bills have triggered an unrest among the people of Pakistan-administered Kashmir. Residents find it ironic that despite housing major hydropower plants, the illegally occupied region is unable to fulfill its minimum demand of power supply. Unscheduled and long hours of load shedding has continued to hit normal life in the illegally occupied region of Pakistan-administered Kashmir. Locals say it is ironic that even after generating more than 1,000 megawatts through several hydroelectric projects, the residents suffer 16 to 18 hours of load shedding on a daily basis. And over that heavy billing, despite load shedding, is also a vital issue that has never been addressed under the successive Pakistan governments that have ruled the territory illegally. Residents call it an injustice done to them at the hands of administrators. तो ये कि आजाद कश्मीर जो है वो पान बिजली मंसूबों से माला माल खेता है क्योंकि ये पानियों का खेता है और पानियों की वजह से यहाँ पे पान बिजली मंसूबे जो हैं वो गुजरात तीस तीस चालीस सालों से जो है वो कुमारे पाकिस्तान जान लगा रही है वो लोड शेडन की बनियादी वजह ये है कि उन पान बिजली मंसूबों से जो है वो आ चाहिए तो ये कि चूंकि पान बिजली मंसूबे आजाद कश्मीर में लग रहे हैं और आजाद कश्मीर को इनका पूरा पूरा आग मिलना चाहिए तो सेतम जरिफी ये कि यहाँ रियलिटी तक भी आजाद कश्मीर गवर्नमेंट को नहीं मिलती और ना ही आजाद कश्मीर गवर्नमेंट को पूछा जाता है। लोकल सिलेज इट इस पार्ट ऑफ इस्लामाबाद्स एजेंडा टू However, the Pakistan establishment has failed to develop the infrastructure of the region, leaving the people high and dry. In news from Afghanistan, the Taliban has intensified its attacks in Afghanistan following the brief pause announced by the U.S. in peace talks with the group last week. At least 23 security personnel were killed in an insider attack claimed by Taliban in Ghazni province on Saturday. The Taliban has intensified attacks in Afghanistan following the pause in the peace talks between the group and the U.S. delegation in Qatar's capital, Doha. The Taliban claimed an insider attack on Saturday in their latest offensive, which killed at least 23 security personnel in Karabagh district in Afghanistan's Ghazni province. U.S. Special Envoy for Peace Zalme Khalilzad had informed on December 12th that the Doha peace negotiations, which had resumed on December 7, have been paused, following the Taliban attack on Bagram airfield, which killed one person at the United States' main military base. The marathon U.S. Taliban talks initiated in October 2018 in Doha to find a negotiated settlement for Afghanistan's lingering crisis were earlier halted in September over the killing of an American soldier in a Taliban-linked car bombing in Kabul. Taliban spokesperson Zuhail Shaheen has reportedly justified the attack on Bagram military base, arguing attacking enemies would continue unless an agreement is reached between the two sides. In news from Bangladesh, a deadly fire in a fan factory in Ghazipur in Bangladesh killed at least 10 people on Sunday evening. Such fires, many of them occurring in unregulated factories, are common in Bangladesh, which is a major manufacturing hub. A senior fire brigade official said the factory clearly had no safety measures. At least 10 people were killed on Sunday when a fire swept through a fan factory near Bangladesh capital Dhaka, the second such incident in less than a week. Firefighters recovered 10 bodies as the fire ripped through the three-story factory at Ghazipur on the outskirts of Dhaka, a local police official said. Sajjad Hussain, Director General of the local fire brigade, said the factory clearly had no safety measures. <laughs> यदि फायर सेफ्टी एंश्योर ना करे निजे देर तावले तो ये दोनों दूर कोटना घोटी थक गए ये तो इंटीरियर के भीतर है जहाँ तो इंडस्ट्री हुए थे तो अश्ले इधर कोनु किच्छ ही नहीं क्या नहीं तो केमिकल काज तो तो शायद ये गाने तीन हर ऑप्टे नारे गाने इस पे रोलिंग सब कुलाई जाए जाए काज करे एक तो अन the blaze comes four days after a devastating fire at a plastics factory operating without proper government permissions just outside Dhaka killed at least 19 people. Such accidents in factories, many of which operate illegally and without proper fire safety measures, are common in Bangladesh. 
At least 14 people were killed and several injured in a bus accident in Nepal's central Sidhupal Chowk district on Sunday. The incident took place when the driver lost control and the bus skidded off the road into a gorge. At least 14 people were killed and dozens of others suffered injuries in a bus accident in Nepal's central Sindhupal Chowk district on Sunday. The accident took place in the morning when the bus skeeted off the road and plunged into a gorge. The injured were rushed to Dhulikail and Khadichor municipalities for immediate treatment. The bus en route to Bhaktapur city was ferrying around 40 pilgrims back from Kalinchok temple in Dholakha district. Investigations are underway to establish the reason behind the tragic incident. The 14th edition of the Shali National Crafts Fair began in eastern India on Sunday. Weavers, artisans and sculptors from all over the country are displaying their work in around 500 stalls. Special arrangements have also been made for people with disabilities during the 13-day event. The 14th edition of the Toshali National Crafts Fair began in Bhubaneswar city of India's eastern Odisha province on Sunday. The Grand Fair, which has been made friendly for people with disabilities and plastic-free this year, was inaugurated by Odisha's Handloom, Textiles and Handicrafts Minister Padmini Dhyan. Several weavers, artisans and sculptors from all over the country are participating in the event, displaying their work in around 500 stalls. इस साल क्या है हम लोग इसको एक्सेसिबल किया हुआ है जैसे व्हीलचेयर और हमारे जो स्पेशल लेबल पर्सन हैं उनके लिए टॉयलेट और टीजी के लिए टॉयलेट और आप देखे होंगे वो हम लोग जो विजुअली इंपैक्ट है उनके लिए भी हम लोग मेटल्स भी बनाए हैं ब्रेल में और काफी कल्चरल प्रोग्राम बाहर स्टेट से भी आए हैं जो ये 13 डे में वो भी हम लोग दिखाएंगे यहीं पे यहां पे हम लास्ट 3 इयर्स से आ रहे हैं यहां पे रिस्पांस बहुत अच्छा मिलता है यहां पे लोग ज्यादातर स्टोल शॉल्स सूट्स पसंद करते हैं रेड कलर ज्यादा ब्लैक कलर चलता है और यहां के लोग बहुत अच्छे हैं शॉपिंग करने के लिए सब आते हैं यहां के लोग बहुत ही शॉपिंग करने के लिए आते हैं Apart from the hand looms display the visitors can enjoy different performances by the folk artists at the fair the event will conclude on December 27th. With the arrival of 28 temple elephants from across Tamil Nadu province, the annual rejuvenation camp for elephants began in India on Sunday. Elephants are given bath, fed herbs and also health checkups are conducted during the camp to reduce their stress levels. A 48-day annual elephant rejuvenation camp began in India's southern Tamil Nadu province on Sunday. 28 temple elephants from across the province have been brought to the rejuvenation camp in Thekampatti village on the outskirts of Coimbatore city. Elephants are given bath, decorated, fed herbs along with fruits and also health checkups are conducted to reduce their stress levels at the camp. Yanaki Martu Sidi. In a Yanagina Teva Rata Parishodana, Laddi, the Maridalam Parishodan Bani, other Kutevana Parishodane, Doran the Waki, the Lanang Coil Lame, Ungodi Ariutan Bella, Kudala Nangonda, and the Lan, Senja, other Pri Coil, Coil Kupoin, and other Pala Pondo. Ella on Kona Kayagor, the Tela, Vanakan Jolunga. If you want to talk to us, we will be happy to talk to you and we will be happy to talk to you and we will be happy to talk to you. The camp offers a comfortable atmosphere to the jumbos, after which they usually gain weight and their happiness level goes up. Elephants are deeply revered in India, where the elephant-headed god Ganesha is one of the most popular in the Hindu pantheon and is also considered lucky. India has more than 50% of Asiatic elephants. However, the population has been dwindling due to frequent poaching over its ivory. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now, our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianNewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianNewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night.
Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.